Hey guys, what's going on? Jab here, and in today's video, Bitcoin did go ahead and have that correction that we were talking about in yesterday's video, and in fact, it went to exactly where we thought it was going to, down to the 50 daily simple moving average. In this video, however, we are going to be discussing several different reasons to still be confident in bullish uptrending movement on Bitcoin coming in the next several weeks. Guys, this correction is nothing to be worried about. This correction is not dire. This correction, so far anyway, is not the beginning of a downtrend. This correction is beautiful. This correction is very healthy. This correction is great for Bitcoin. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you the plethora of different levels of support that Bitcoin just bounced off of because there are many. And I'm also going to be showing you where we can expect Bitcoin to head from here. Guys, there's a lot of value in this video, and as always, if you do enjoy today's video, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. Before we get started, I do first want to mention the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy because the June 2020 coupon code and sale will be ending on Sunday. Guys, if you want to learn technical analysis on these markets, well, you've made a good decision, but it is going to be challenging. I would encourage you to check us out at the link in the description down below. A few of these videos are up for free preview over on our website. If you click the link down below and join CT2A, you'll get $40 off by using the June 2020 coupon code. But more on that at the end of the video. For now, though, guys, without much further ado, let's go ahead and dive right on into it. Guys, I went swimming in the middle of the day on Wednesday, and I live in Florida. I ought to know better, but apparently I don't, and I forgot to wear sunscreen, and my shoulders are burnt like a potato chip. Burnt like a potato? I don't know. They're just very burnt, and it hurts, and it hurts bad, and just sitting here with a shirt on hurts like hell. So please understand, Al, this video came to you guys with a lot of pain, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. So I hope you enjoy it. Hit that like button for my poor burnt shoulders. Anyway, let's jump onto the chart. Guys, yesterday, as you can see, Bitcoin did jump off the metaphorical cliff, pulling all the way back down at its maximum to around $9,000 flat before it started flagging out down there later on in the day. As you can see, Bitcoin pulled back all the way down to around $9,085 last night before having a pretty strong bounce here all the way up to a local high of $9,500. Volume came back in a big way. These were the biggest volume candlesticks we'd seen since the beginning of the month. And remember, guys, we were talking about decreased volatility and how it was going to come back. That volatility has most certainly returned to Bitcoin now. No longer are we making little 1% or 2% movements like we were back a few days ago. Now we had a correction that was 10% in size and a bounce that was about the same size, about 5%. But you might be asking the question, Jeb, why are your trend lines down here? I thought Bitcoin broke bearish out of this trend line. I thought this trend line was up here yesterday. Well, you were right. Yesterday it was. But after Bitcoin corrected, I found something very interesting. Let's go on to a clean chart, and I want to show you the daily chart. Remember yesterday when we talked about how Bitcoin was probably going to get its first support around the 50 daily simple moving average? Well, that is exactly where Bitcoin got its support. As you can see, Bitcoin pulled back to around $9,100. That was where the 50 was. Bitcoin very obviously bounced off of the region surrounding that moving average. And while it is prudent to note that Bitcoin fell below the 20 daily exponential moving average, which is not a very good sign, and on today's Wix has tested it as resistance, which again is not a very good sign, Bitcoin has found some substantial support down here. Because keep in mind, guys, even though Bitcoin bounced around $9,100, the VPVR maximum is sitting at $8,760, which means that even if Bitcoin fell a little bit lower, we'd still have some extremely strong support. There is a lot of VPVR support right where we are. We managed to get through most of it earlier, and now we have bottled that up, and we can use it as a reserve of support to keep the bullish momentum going. But the thing that really interests me is actually back on our other chart, right here. You guys will notice this uptrend because this is how it was drawn yesterday, but if we go to the four-hourly chart and have a little bit more resolution, you can see that it actually makes more sense to draw the uptrend like this. Why would that be? Well, as you can see, when we had our uptrend drawn like this a couple days ago, yes, it did take into account this bottom. Yes, it did take into account these bottoms right here. But notice it was cutting bottoms off down over here. Wasn't a very clean trend line. But if we go ahead and move it down to fit our current bottom, what happens to these previous lows over here? Every single one of them fits perfectly. Guys, this was an invisible trend line that we did not see. Bitcoin came down and tested it, and it just so happened to line up perfectly with the 50 daily simple moving average. But guys, as you'll notice, there's also a trend line right here. What's this? Well, it turns out this is another major level of support for Bitcoin. We find this trend line giving support here and here and all the way up to where we are now. And also, as you can see, this trend line can be back extrapolated to take into account that high, that high, that high, that high, and that high. So essentially what we found here, guys, is that the trading channel that Bitcoin was in back at the end of March and April 
both of those trend lines have extended out now and where they're converging is exactly where we're getting support. And again, remember the 50 daily simple moving average and the VPVR is giving us support where we are right now. That's why I called this a beautiful correction in the title because yes, Bitcoin had a correction, but Bitcoin has managed to lock in some of those bullish gains and at the same time, Bitcoin has managed to find very, very strong support. So what happens from here? Well, guys, I think we have to remember that the reason that Bitcoin fell $1,000 yesterday was because it found very strong resistance. What this means is that once again, Bitcoin finds itself in yet another consolidation pattern, except this time it's between the same downtrend and all of this support down here, most of which is trending to the upside. Both of those trend lines and the 50 simple moving average are. So guys, this is kind of good and bad news. I hate to be the bearer of good and bad news. I'd rather just be the bearer of good news, but... The bad news I'll start with first. The bad news is Bitcoin is basically still in a sideways pattern, in a consolidation pattern. We've more or less just redefined it. And now the apex point of that is on towards the end of this month. But the good news is, is that Bitcoin one, corrected and locked in some gains and two, is not confirmed to be entering a new downtrend just yet. What I would expect Bitcoin to do here is to bounce off of the 50 simple moving average and bounce off of both of these trend lines. Both of those are very, very strong support regions and Bitcoin is sitting on both of them. If Bitcoin bounces from there, it would make a lot of sense for it to return to the red downtrending level of resistance that we've been talking about. And maybe that trampoline idea that we talked about a couple videos ago will come into play where Bitcoin needed to have a correction, get some bullish momentum and allow that to break through the resistance level. We shall see on that. Guys, as we've said, the technicals and the fundamentals are all still looking pretty good. In fact, if we look out to the weekly chart, a lot of you guys pointed out in the last couple of days, and I was planning on talking about it today, the TD sequential has now reset. No longer are we dealing with a nine flash. As you can see, we have a one down here, which means the TD sequential has reset, which means that the weekly chart is free and clear and ready to continue moving to the upside. We're not going to have to be contending with the TD if we break to the upside. As you can see right over here, Bitcoin had a nine flash on the TD sequential, had a red candlestick, but the red candlestick wasn't deep enough, so we didn't have a number on that candlestick, which meant that that the nine was still in play. I am hoping that Bitcoin closes this weekly candlestick red just the way it's sitting right now so that we don't have to worry about this nine on the TD sequential and we will be perfectly fine. As you can see, this time there's a number under it, which means that we have reset it properly. And that's good news, guys, because remember, basically the only thing that we were concerned about on Bitcoin was the nine flash on the TD sequential and some uncertainty in the global economy. Now, I'm not downplaying the significance of the uncertainty in the global economy. Remember, there's 40 million Americans out of work. The global unemployment has gone up a dozen percentage points at least. But at the same time, a lot of that doesn't seem to be having a major impact on Bitcoin. And even the traditional markets are bouncing very hard. So it would make a lot of sense if Bitcoin was able to continue the uptrend that it started back on Black Thursday. So guys, here's my take on the market. Bitcoin has had a healthy correction. Bitcoin has found strong support. Bitcoin from here, this is where the predictions come in. Bitcoin, I think, has a strong chance of bouncing here and trending to the upside back towards that red downtrending level of resistance. Do I think we're gonna break it immediately? Honestly, no, guys. It's going to be a little bit of a wild card. I don't think any of us are going to be able to predict very well when exactly this breakout comes. We've been in this pattern for almost six weeks now. Honestly, the technicals are saying that it could have happened three weeks ago. They're saying it could happen three weeks from now. I don't think the technical analysis is going to help us very much figuring out when the breakout is coming. We can talk all day about which direction it'll be, but the, the matter of the time period that it's going to happen in is very, very, very hard to discern. That being said, I will end on this note. When Bitcoin does break out, here is how you're probably going to want to go about trading it. Whether or not Bitcoin breaks to the upside or to the downside, it is going to be very difficult to confirm either movement. Here's what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to have an entry position above or below the downtrending level of resistance or below the uptrending level of support. You're going to want to wait for a significant amount of volume to come out. For example, see where I place this? You may have entered a position on a wick up here, but notice the volume. The volume was non-existent. You didn't need to worry about this being a breakout because we hadn't confirmed it. Down here, we had a significant amount of red volume. It wouldn't have been a bad idea to enter a short position about 24 hours ago right there. I'm sure a lot of you guys did. As I said in yesterday's video, I was going to if I wasn't recording and I probably would have used about 20x leverage on, I probably would have used 25x leverage on that trade. Probably would have made about 150% on that trade if I had made it. But like I said, I was recording. Obligatory, be careful with leverage. Leverage can wreck you. Don't get screwed. You know, duh, be careful. That's why I don't talk about leverage much. <laughs>
Anyway, guys, the point I'm trying to make here is that you don't want to enter a trade before the breakout. You want to wait for the breakout to actually happen, and then that's when you'll enter the trade. Be very conservative on these breakouts. As we saw with the Bart Simpson about a week ago, Bitcoin can very easily break to the upside and immediately come right back down. Most of you guys know to wait until the actual breakout proper to go ahead and trade said market, but I want to make sure those of you guys who are new here, because there are a lot of you that are new here lately, don't fall into the trap of entering a short or a long before the breakout. You want to wait for the trend, and then when the trend is your friend again, because right now the trend is sideways, and the trend isn't your friend in any aspect, you want to wait until the trend is your friend and then you will make a trade. So that's not financial advice, simply friendly advice. Just another kind of F.A. F.A. being the cousin of F.U., but you know, I'm trying to be polite, you know? <laughs> Anyway, guys, that is more or less going to wrap it for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy. Before we go, there is just one thing I want to talk about, though, and it's the importance of taking responsibility. You know, as the poet Rag and Bone Man once said, I'm only human after all, and all of us tend to make mistakes every once in a while, and I've definitely made some in my life, many, many in my life. No one's perfect. I've made some recently. I've made some a long time ago. All of us can look back on a time where we screwed up, and we know full well that it was our fault even if we don't let anyone else know that it was our fault by admitting it to it in front of everyone who should have had an admission of guilt coming out of your mouth or my mouth. Guys, I remember I used to play a lot of League of Legends, and it was really interesting because you would see people talking all of the time about how to get to Diamond, how to get to Master, how to get to Challenger, how to get to the LCS, how to go to Worlds, how to become a World Championship, how to go the distance, how to be great, how to be successful. And something you would see every single one of them say is don't blame others. Every single one of them will give the exact same piece of advice. And a lot of times when I'm looking for wisdom or I'm looking for advice, I look around in an industry and I say, what is the same piece of advice every single one of these people is giving? It must be foundational, else they wouldn't all be saying it. And every single one of them in the league community, and I later found in the business community, one of the most common piece of, pieces of advice that they would give is to take responsibility of your own actions and don't put the blame on anyone else. And I remember there was a YouTuber named Foxtrot. I wonder, he might, I don't know. He, I think he still makes videos. And one time he said something that stuck with me. This is probably four years ago I saw this video. He said, there's no point in blaming other people for the mistakes that you made. There's no point in focusing on what other people did because at the end of the day, you can't control what other people did. You can only control what you did. You can't stop that person from ganking bot lane at the wrong time. And you can't stop that person from sideswiping you in traffic and hurting you. But you know what you could have stopped? You could have waited and not run the yellow light. You could have held off a second. You could have not screwed up. That's not to say the other person isn't at fault. They very well may be, but it's not beneficial to you. It's not conducive to growth for you to focus on what someone else did because at the end of the day, you have no control over their actions. You do, however, have control over your own. And that's something that's very, very difficult for human beings to deal with because at the end of the day, humans are very very egotistical creatures, and admitting you screwed up is one of the hardest things that anyone can ever do. My dad always taught me that from a young age, but I later found that there's a Navy SEAL named Jocko Willink, who I would love to meet one day, who wrote a book called Extreme Ownership. And you know what? I didn't have a page picked out. This is just luck. I actually opened to the exact page I wanted. I haven't opened this book in six months. Jocko Willink was the commander of the battlefield in Ramadi, and there was a blue on blue, which means friendly fire had ended up with someone killed. And instead of trying to find one of his subordinate officers or one of his men, to blame for what had happened, he said this. You know whose fault this is? You know who gets all the blame for this? The entire group sat there in silence, including the CO, the CMC, and the investigating officer. No doubt they were wondering whom I would hold responsible. Finally, I took a deep breath and I said, there's only one person to blame for this, for people dying. Me. I am the commander. I am responsible for the entire operation. As a senior man, I am responsible for every action that takes place on the battlefield. There is no one to blame but me. The point of extreme ownership, the point of what my father has taught me for the last 15 years, ever since I was old enough to understand what he was talking about, this book is not news to me. The point of it is not to get out of trouble. The point of it is to do what's right. And what's right is to take responsibility for your own actions, not only because that's the right thing to do, but because that's the only way you'll grow. The reason I bring this up is because this is extremely applicable to cryptocurrency and trading Bitcoin. Because a lot of times I will see people in the comment section saying things in seriousness, or maybe in jest, but sometimes when someone says something in jest, it's reflective of something they mean deeply. I'll hear someone say... Oh, well, the whales crashed the market, so therefore I'm just, you know, what can I do? My hands are, my hands are, all, my hands are tied. I just, I lost money. It's not my fault. The, where, the bear whales came in. Or it's not my fault. Some piece of news knocked my feet out from under me. It's not my fault. This technical analyst didn't tell me this was going to happen. I see a lot of blame shifting in the cryptocurrency market, and I'm challenging you. The next time something doesn't go your way, and honestly, every single time something doesn't go your way, 
try taking responsibility for it. Try not focusing on what everyone else did or what the whales did or what the news did or what the fundamentals did or what the analysts did or what your exchange did or what anyone did. How about you focus on what you did? Because at the end of the day, you can control Binance going down for maintenance, but you can control whether or not you put a stop loss in. Take ownership of your actions for a little while and see where it gets you. I promise you, there are two ways to make your life great. A passion for self-development and faith. Those two things will take you anywhere you want to go. And the way to get that passion for self-development is to start focusing on what you can do better. And to get there, you need to start taking responsibility for your own actions. I noticed it hadn't been a while since I've done one of these little life lessons or whatever at the end of the videos. And I know a lot of you guys love them. So there you go. That's my two cents. Anyway, guys, before we go, there is one more thing I do just first want to mention, and that'd be the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy, guys. CT2A is on sale. CT2A will be on sale through the end of Sunday. If you guys want to learn absolutely everything you need to know about technical analysis, this is the place to do it. It's really funny. Someone in the comments section down below yesterday was like, the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy that doesn't accept Bitcoin payments? Ha 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 ha. That's so dumb. And I responded, we've taken two Bitcoin payments today. Not sure what you're talking about, friend. <laughs> But guys, yes, there is a 14-day money-back refund guarantee. And yes, we do accept Bitcoin payments. Shoot us an email at cryptojeb at gmail.com. Guys, learning technical analysis on your own is a very difficult thing to do. Imagine that, imagine that you were trying to learn calculus on your own, and you never had anyone teach you, like, your times tables. You didn't have a basic foundational understanding of math, and you're trying to learn calculus on your own. That's what trying to learn technical analysis is without a little bit of guidance. It is an extremely difficult thing to learn. It is going to take time. It is going to be hard. This is not a get-rich-quick scheme. None of those actually work. Technical analysis is a skill like marketing or surgery or, or being a mechanic. It is a skill that will bring you income because you are providing value in some way. I never gotten up here and professed that it's going to be easy, but I can promise you one thing, and that is that it's going to be significantly easier if you go through CT2A. Guys, I've seen people from all walks of life, all backgrounds, all financial disciplines come through CT2A and come out the other side much, much better at reading markets. I get emails and DMs and private messages from people every single day telling me how much CT2A has helped them to learn these markets. I can sit down here for the next two hours and read some of them for you if you'd like to have a story time video at some point. Guys, the greatest investment you will ever make is one in your mind. It's not going to be in Ethereum. It's not going to be in Cardano. It's not going to be in meth coin. It's going to be in your mind. It's going to be in your brain, the gray matter up here. Guys, if you want to learn technical analysis, there is one great place to do it, and it is CT2A. It's linked in the description down below. By the way, two of our videos are completely free previews if you want to see what the Academy is like. That's nearly an hour of free content that'll teach you some really valuable skills over there. But guys, that is going to wrap it out for today's video. Before I go, though, I do just first want to thank you guys for 43,000 subscribers. That's just absolutely crazy. I can't believe that. But, uh, yeah. But anyway, guys, like I said, that is going to wrap it out for today's video. Before I go, though, I do just first want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching, as always. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.